<laughs> Incredible, bravo, though I must warn you, court her at your peril. She'll not nurse babies, she'd turn them into bacon. <laughs> thank you, thank you. He liked that joke, yes. I discovered this next woman in the kingdom of Poland, subsisting on coppers tossed at her feet. Miss Robin Kaminsky. seem overly humane to me. I think it's mighty fine. Beside the booth. Mm, sorry to see you leave so soon. Folks, I'm going to tell you a morality tale from when our country was young. But the settlers used to tell about the woods of Massachusetts and the creatures that lived there. One summer, a bear was by the stream. An old man wind appeared and said, Bear, I shall blow a mighty cold upon the land and gorge yourself on fish and meat and go find a den. Then sleep, not for one night, but for sixty. Go tell all the animals of the forest what I have told you. Bear was sad because the fish were his friends, and now he had to eat them. But he knew to do whatever the wind told him. The animals of the forest often teased Bear and said he was slow and lazy and foolish for listening to old man wind. You're talking to the wind again, eh? Laughed the rabbit. I think Bear has finally taken leave of his senses, said the turtle. 
and he's getting so rotund that even I could outrun him. I'm smart and quick, said Rabbit. I'll outrun Old Man Wind if he comes a-calling, or you, since you're into eating your friends, the turtle said. If wind comes, I'll just hide in my shell. Then Bear went and warned Coyote and Possum that they should prepare for a long, cold winter. It's so hot, said the Coyote. There's plenty of time. The lazy Possum said, well, there's an abundance of food. Maybe I'll just store some in my pouch. Even his squirrel friends made fun of Bear. They laughed and laughed and squibbled and squabbled. Chunky needs a nap. Fatty Goody Two-Shoes does what he's told. Bear was very sad. But he was a good bear, and he always did what Old Man Wind told him. He went and found a den, snuggled inside, and fell fast asleep. <coughs> snored and snored for many days. When he woke up, he saw spring had come. He was very hungry, so he walked outside. As the snow melted, he saw all his friends who hadn't listened, frozen and just ready to be eaten. And that's why the bear hibernates. So listen to your elders and do just what you're told. another one. I'm not one to gossip, but I hear Grover's been Gentlemen. sleeping next to the pigs again. Well, hi there. Hi there. How are you keeping? I've seen Rod a day. I'm losing blood. Please, save me. Oh, Poland, I can feel it getting looser. Oh, oh God. Oh, oh, you did it. Oh, oh, I, uh, I gotta get some scrap or something. Oh, oh, mister, you, I thought... I was gonna be all oh, go! Oh, I thought I was gonna be a goal. Oh, you, you can take whatever you want from my pet for saving me. Oh. Oh. The pain, at least. Oh, oh, yeah. Field day over this back in town.
rest up here if you want. I won't be much company. Come on, warm yourself a while. You have regrets? Sure. Too many. I've been a loner for a long time. Prefer it that way. But my brother wrote to me and asked me if I'd help his family move out west. We hadn't spoken in years. Two very different fellers. But I thought, this is something I can do. Wish I could tell you this had a happy ending. I travel out to meet them, ride with the wagon train, them and a couple other families, all soft-handed city types. A couple of days in, my brother had irking me something rotten, asking when I'm gonna settle down, acting like he's better. So, just as we start the climb to cross over the Grizzlies, I bolt and don't look back. And you know what? They got caught in bad weather in the mountains and died. Every single one even started eating each other. And I'll always have that one on my conscience. Look, I'm sorry. You don't need to hear this. I need to keep busy. Is that so? Yes. Yes, it is so. That's sort of why I said it. That and because I was lonely and wanted to talk. Maybe we could be friends. I've always wanted a real friend. Someone to discuss the human condition with, you know? Uh, I don't know much about that. Neither do I. Be well, friend. Be well. To our place. I got away, but they got my wife. Please, mister. I gotta do something. All right. Where is she? It's a sack down in the swamp by the water. <laughs> okay. Go on. See if you can find the law. I'll do what I can. Uh, I go about finding more help. Oh, I'm gonna take my time killing a pretty little thing like you. 
We were hoping you could row us in quietly one evening around the back of his house. Well, if anyone can, I can. We'll pay you for your trouble. If you bringing him trouble, it won't be no trouble for me. Good. My business partner, Jules, he's out on the skiff. I need to check with him. Plus, I need to check the traps. Would you come with me? Of course. Arthur? Why not? It shouldn't take too long if we can find him. Be lively. Mind you, there's a lot of gators. Uncommon number. Big ones. Great. Come now, Arthur. It'll take more than a prehistoric reptile to scare you, Shirley. Well, I just want to see you meet your match when it comes to a, an aging predator with a big mouth, Dutch. Arthur here is something of a comedian, Thomas. More of a jester than a gunslinger. Well, if you say so, Mr. Dutch. This way. Come on, this way. Follow me here. I don't want to know what just touched my leg. Mr. Dutch, you show you the right fellas to be going after Angelo Brunson? Oh, he's much more the kind of reptile I can handle. Now stay close. Make sure you follow my line. Oh, I fully intend to, Thomas. You too, Mr. Arthur. Whoa. Stop where you are. It's a gator. Just stay as still. You too, Mr. Arthur. Stop where you are. It's a gator. 
Just stay as still as you can. All right, let's keep moving. I got another trap by that small island up here. I don't know what's taking Jewel so long with that boat. I think we are all equally keen to find him. Ooh. Guess something didn't want to be caught. My gosh. So it's true. What is? There's been talk of a big old bull, but people talk a lot of nonsense. I guess this was... No, but only some huge could do this. Oh, fantastic. Let's hope it bites you first, Dutch. Should we just keep moving? I don't really want to hang around here much longer. All right. I suppose this can wait. Let's go. Where is the boat? Over there. I ran. I... No. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, where'd this monster swim off to? I think that way. Got the scare! It's over here! Stop! I don't know. I got it loose. Jump. Good man. Alright, let's get back to the dock. Yes, please, let's go! Thank God. I thought I was going to be out here all night. What was you doing hiding up in the tree, boy? This gator was huge, Thomas. Twice as big as I ever seen. Twice as angry, too. Nonsense. Well, boy, I think we hit a tree stone. Hey, I thought we cleared. You're going to need to jump in and pull us free. Me? Yeah, just do it. Won't take you a minute, boy. Go on. This is a bad idea. <laughs> We'll see any giant monster long before it gets anywhere near you. Got a couple of crack gunslingers here with the guns loaded. You'll be fine. You didn't see the thing. Yeah, neither did you. It's just a myth, Jules. Now pull. Come on, put your back into it.
monkey's going, shit, that is one big old gator. Oh, your boy doesn't look too good there. Here, take this. Try to stop the bleeding. You're gonna be okay, son. You're gonna be okay. Just thank your old Uncle Dutch. I heard that. There's still a lot of blood. You need to put pressure on it. I've stopped the bleeding. I think he'll be okay. If he don't get a fever, we can bring down a fever. A fever is the least of our worries. Look who's back. God damn it. Pull it down. Three pull it, you got it. Okay, kid. Oh. Sorry, Jules. Guess all them stories was true. <laughs> Big and bad. That's unusual. Normally, the little one's angry. Big one's is lazy. Well, I guess he never outgrew his anger. Kind of reminds me of you, Arthur. You know, I don't think I've ever seen you squeal before, Dutch. <laughs> I weren't the one squeal. Yeah, well, you weren't in the water with him. And this poor boy was nearly dinner. <laughs> Can we get some help? Uh, Jules has been bitten. Uh, oh my god. There's a monster out here. Uh, he's been bitten, but he's alive. Uh, Just keep him warm. Uh, Feed him garlic for the infection. Uh, Thank you. Both of you. I'm at your service anytime you need. Thank you, Thomas. Where can we find you? You just meet me back here. Very good. Can one of you help me put the boat back out? Sure. I'm gonna head back to camp and placate the irritable Miss O'Shea, who's causing more trouble. I'll collect the boys. Meet you back here, Arthur. Mr. Arthur? Yeah. Old Bronte. A bad man. I know. Killed some good folks. Hurt a lot of people. Well, he definitely lacks a certain charm. I'll see you soon. You be safe. You got monsters out here. Well, monsters I'm fine with. Live with them. Dark and unpleasant choice. Be lonely or get murdered. Not very exciting as it goes. Huh. Uh, I suppose pick lonely? Did you miss me? Uh, I suppose so. Yes, I missed you too. And I've been quite lonely out here. One day, I long to have a wife. But women can be so cruel. Nobody wants large children. They eat too much. It's very sad. Here for a ticket to the show? Which show is it today? 
Oh, a special one. The Legend of Josiah Blackwater. sure know about our great national hero and pioneer, Josiah Blackwater. Him that gave the town of Blackwater its nomenclature. You see, only about a hundred years ago, were nothing here but big old force, ferocious beasts, surly savages, arid deserts, and unconquered mountains. Josiah Blackwater was born in the year of our Lord, 1782, in a log cabin just west of Ansburg. He was a special boy. His pa gave him his first rifle when he was three years old. Boy, he took to it right away. He exclaimed, There's a whole mess of critters out there in the woods that need to eat us. I'm gonna consume them first. Yes, sir. He really took to killing all manner of things. He was such a keen shot. One morning, he was sorting up some winter turnips for the root cellar when a big old bear and her cubs came in the kitchen hunting for food. It had a mind to eat up all the jams and preserves. Josiah grabbed that bear and wrestled her to the ground and squeezed and squeezed and squeezed. He whooped the tar clean out of that big old critter. Then he tied her up, grabbed them cups, and ground them into sausages while the mama bear watched. Mm, that fine eating. His mom and pa knew right then he was cut out to be the finest wild frontiersman that ever drew breath. But first, they wanted him to get some book learning. After only three days of attending school, Josiah beat the living daylights out of a class bully and announced to his daddy that he was tired of ciphering and mathematics on account it's only good for adding up the number of critters or Indians you can kill. So, he ran away from home and headed west. Now, these lands were occupied by savages then, and when Josiah Blackwater came scouting through, he recognized it to be a land of splendor, wasted on those that couldn't appreciate it on account of worshiping false idols. He got rid of all them pesky buffalo, and thereby ensured those infernal engines didn't have nothing to eat. Of course, that got them mightily riled up, so he had to slaughter all of them, too. Just like his daddy had once done to the Redcoats in 1775. Right about that time, he met an Indian girl he took pity on, on account of having annihilated her family. She was 12 years old, and so he took her as his wife. She gave him two sons before she died of typhus. Now, y'all know that Josiah Blackwater wore a possum for a hat. But most don't know how that came to be. Well, one day, old Josiah was riding a couple of alligators down the Lanahatchee River. Riding, standing up, and shooting eagles right out of the sky. When he sees a big old mountain lion about to eat a possum, Josiah grabbed that mountain lion by the tail and wrestled it till it was plumb dead. Well, that possum really took to Josiah. Followed him around like a dog loyal to its master. Yes. They had a lot of adventures together. Now Josiah never cried a day in his life, but he pert near dead on the day that possum passed, for they were mighty fine friends. So he skinned it and made the hat. Back in them days, a possum skin was as good as money, but he never parted with that hat, not even for $10. Once he founded the town of Blackwater, he sent word for settlers to come. It was the last stop in the west before San Francisco. He met a girl by the name of Rufina Hellsby at a barn dance one night. Took her as his wife and settled down. Built himself a cattle empire and had 14 youngins. But Josiah Blackwater wasn't the home-loving kind, and he grew mighty restless. One day on the courthouse steps, he announced, You may all go to hell, and I will go to Saint Denis. And so he did enjoyed French pursuits of strumpets and wanton gluttony, which is where he came upon the idea of running for Congress. He wore that possum hat every day as a congressman, as a reminder of where he come from, saying, I may live in barbaric splendor, but I always remember, keep your friends close and your gun closer, because you don't know when you might have to shoot them.